Okay. Is it me? Or all right. Yeah. Sorry, for? everyone, for all those issues. Uh, anyway, we're getting it solved. I think. Yeah. Like I said, I think we got it figured out. It looks cool. like we're broadcasting live. Hopefully, we're not lagging too much. I don't know. I don't know. Um, that looks pretty laggy right there. But that could just be on our end. Um, so, well, anyway, let's just go ahead and go live. We're going to do a podcast anyway. So we're, so we're broadcasting live. And uh, hopefully this works. And just uh, keep letting Sarah know if it's uh, working or not working. I'll be here. Okay. All right. You ready? All right, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. You're listening to the Fun Employment Radio Network. The future of radio. The future. The future of radio is here. Funemploymentradio.com. I mean, I'm just worried now at this point. If you're over <laughs> at my house, you're going to start stealing things. I don't know. Like, they're is starting it, to give me a complex about it. I know. It. I mean, are you going to be joining up with my neighbors? Do I have now an issue in the house? Like, Sir, this is. Like, they're starting to make really me. They're making me question myself. I'm like, is there something about me that you think this is going to be an issue? Well, that's, that's the thing. There's two things there. Like, one, are you going to develop a problem? And two, why do they think you're going to have a problem? I mean, so they much? don't just think they're actively, like, calling me, like, yeah. every couple hours, just checking to make sure. I am going to check all of my valuables before we do the show. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Fun Employment Radio. I am Greg Nibbler here with Sarah X. Dillon. Thank you so much for tuning in today, wherever and however you listen. It is so fantastic that you do so. Of course, we are live here five days a week on the Fun Employment Radio Network, then available, <laughs> then available via podcast all over the internet internet, wherever podcasts can be found. And if you are listening to this show, uh, be it via podcast or our live video, because we are broadcasting live right now on YouTube from my house. <gasps> so we're from, house. <laughs> we're from my house. If you have the video, if you're listening to the podcast, you can go find this on YouTube. Uh, you see the uh, the backyard back there. It's uh, quite splendid. I don't really know what to say about my backyard. Oh, it's, it's nice. It's and there. right beyond um, those bushes over there is the Russian's house. The Russian's house right is behind, behind us, me, so yeah. I have a broadcast. That camera right now, if you're watching live on YouTube or watching the video afterward, the camera is aimed at the Russian uh, neighbor's house. So mm. if you do see like random smoke, uh, you know, from their bonfires, there come are a up, couple lawn chairs up or, there. Uh, I was uh, yeah, at you those. could get somebody up on the roof too. Yeah. That's possible. If that happens, we'll know. aim the camera correctly so you can watch that live. <laughs> uh, and the reason that we're live here out of my house today is because Sarah. Uh, well, if you listen to the show, you know we didn't do a couple of episodes last week. And uh, that is for a good reason. Mm -hmm. You may have seen the reports on Facebook or uh, the reports, what we posted on Facebook and the report. Twitter and, and Fun Employment Updates. Radio uh, talking about what happened. But if you didn't see all that, you may be in the dark as to why we haven't done a show for the last couple of days. And we thought maybe we'd just kind of explain what's been going on, why we're broadcasting from my house and what's happened with Sarah, which she is alive. Number yes. one, I guess you can see that part. Are so you sure visually, I'm not a robot, Greg? Visually, you can tell that she's alive. Oh uh, yeah. Or yeah, that's true. You Did you build a robot, robot me? Robot Am I robot really you. me? That's true. I don't know if I go through that much effort just to build a robot you though. That would be like a lot of Thanks. work. To, I mean, but I don't was know. Was that mean? I can't tell if that was mean I don't know if that's or mean or not. <laughs> I'm just saying like, I don't know if that's the first thing. If I'm going to build an Android of someone, I feel like that would be kind of creepy if you're the first person I that's thought of. That's true because I figure if you're going to build a robot, it would be some sort of like sex robot thing and I don't want to I'm be not going to build a sex robot. If you were going to build any kind of robot, I'm sure that if you could build a robot, you would build a robot that you could have relations with. Well, I mean, it's my robot. Exactly. I I'm mean, saying if you, had a dip, if you had a choice to build any robot you wanted, one of which yeah. you could have relations with and one of which you couldn't, you'd always go with relations. Also of note, and this is perfect timing since we're broadcasting from my house, oh, yeah. if you can hear it, there are sirens blasting in the background as we Southeast are in Portland. outer southeast lower felony flats Portland. Mm -hmm. That is exactly where we are. Um, all right, so uh, so let's let's go back to the beginning here, and then we'll talk about Sarah's uh, upcoming issue that she has, uh, yes. the, the complex that she's developing. So last Thursday, today is Monday, mm -hmm. and uh, last Thursday, Thursday, uh, very early in the morning, I got a call from Sarah, which is quite strange because she doesn't call me early in the morning. Nobody no. calls me early in the morning, and yet alone rarely would I answer. Because if someone calls you early in the morning, it's, it's never for something good. Yeah. Just like, hey, guess what? I just won the lottery. Like, if someone's calling you at 4.30 in the morning, it's oh, not for a good reason. No, I would never call. No, I'll tell you what. If I won the lottery, I wouldn't tell anyone. I know. You've already said this. Yes, you'd scroll no. it away and then disappear. The way I would do it, no, I wouldn't disappear, but I wouldn't say a word until I had the cash in hand. I would not tell a single mm. person. I would go straight down and camp out outside of like the lottery place wherever you, in Salem or wherever you go, and that's, and that's what I would do. I would not tell anyone. I know you wouldn't. No one. Yeah, you could have already won the lottery. I think we've talked about this before. Like, you could have won, and I just don't know, and you're just pretending that you won. I'd it. have a much better uh, technological equipment 
that would just oh, come out of nowhere. Oh, but you're an actor. Like, maybe you're just, you know, pretending to be struggling. No, I can tell you why I wouldn't be struggling is because of how long it took to get this live stream up to date. That would not have been the issue. <laughs> I would I would be hiring someone. You'd uh, just all of a sudden see, like, I'd have an assistant that would show up and be like, why do you have an assistant? Like, oh, no, let's just, I'd, I'd disguise it as, no, that's my new friend, Tim. Tim just comes along with me everywhere I go and that he drives. That would be weird if all of a sudden you just had a new friend that's just hanging <laughs> that's just around. Just like I'd, I'd adhere to everything I said. Like, I'm just like kind of bossing him around, but I'm trying to hide the money. Yeah, that, that would be it. Okay. And then, you know, all of a sudden I have uh, Peter who does all the cooking here at the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he's, some he's a new roommate. He just mm-hmm. does all the cooking here. Yeah, all of a sudden, like, construction is happening everywhere. Yeah. You can have, like, cleaners and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, I won a contest, and oh, now they boy. are fixing my house. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's how it would work. All right, so what happened? Anyway, you did so not win the lottery. I that's did. Not, I, I won the shit quite lottery. Quite the opposite of <laughs> yes. the lottery that it happened. It was the opposite of winning the lottery that happened to me. So you gave a call. So at about, at about 4.30 on Thursday morning, well, for me, I woke up at about, like, 3 on Thursday morning, and I woke up, and I was having these really, really bad stomach cramps and for me I thought that maybe it was just um like cramping like lady time cramping so I was like okay this is weird it kind of hurts a little bit more than usual yeah um but as I was sitting there I'm like it wasn't going away and in fact it just started getting worse and worse and worse and I kind of felt like my insides were on fire like I've never I have never felt anything like this in my entire life and uh so much so I was in so much pain that I was actually it, it made me throw up from from the pain uh so i was sitting there i was in pain I, I, that's I, hardcore yeah I, I i don't think i don't know if i've ever thrown up it was pain it like was that. indescribable how i i just i can't even put into words how much it hurt and um so i was, and so I, I was could doing tell that. just by your voice yeah i could barely talk i i couldn't talk and so i was i i tried to deal with it for about an hour until I've never had this feeling before because this is the first time I've ever, ever actually had to go to the hospital, like to the emergency room. Yeah. Because um, I've never had it hurt to the point where you're just like, there is something very wrong with me and it's something that I cannot deal with by myself and there's a, there's well, an issue. And it was terrifying hearing from you just because I oh. knew like that this was not a joke, like that you were messed up and and pretty much we determined, yeah, you needed to get to the emergency room. Mm. So I, I went right over. So I called Greg. I'm like, I think, I'm like, I, I don't know what's happening. I'm like, there's something wrong. I've just thrown up a bunch and yeah. the pain it, it isn't getting better. It's getting worse. I'm like, I, and then so I finally called my dad and uh, and I couldn't really talk to my dad. So I called Greg and then Greg ended up talking to my dad and he's like, yeah, take yeah. her to the emergency room yeah it, right now so this is about five o'clock in the morning yeah on thursday yeah and so off we went to the emergency room which is <sighs> not something anyone ever wants to do that early in the morning i mean i i even i was running lights like i was doing everything to get her there because she i've never seen any very few people in as much pain as sarah clearly was like she could barely even walk so i'm like i gotta get her there now um and so i i ran through lights and and whatever you know yeah you guys are pretty fast yeah i'm still waiting i'm imagining i i have an imagination that i'm going to get some tickets from something uh for that because i was speeding everywhere if you do i will gladly pay it oh yeah we'll, you i will i will cover whatever cost of the ticket care yeah at all that hopefully it would drop yeah so i barely out. remember greg coming and getting me and the ride there because i was kind of blacking out mm-hmm. like it's that kind of paper where I, I kept feeling like i was gonna pass out or throw up, and then I would do like a little bit of both. And uh, Greg finally got me there. And by the time we walked into the emergency room, I couldn't stand, so he like put me in a wheelchair. Yeah, and had to wheel me up to the counter where they stuck the little bracelet on me. Uh huh. And, and checked you in and all that stuff. And and yeah, and then we had to wheel you uh, back into another room. And and this is something. So I've. I've only been in the ER once. I, I went there because I had because I had pink eye in California and I couldn't get an appointment anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, fine, I'm just going to go to the ER. Um, and pink eye sucks when you're on vacation, by the way. It's horrible. It sucks anytime. But it yeah, I was going to say that seems like in general. Sucks on I've had it before. It sucks. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's that's like my only experience. And it wasn't a rush. It wasn't an emergency. It's just I need, to, need somebody to give me a prescription for eye stuff. Um, <laughs> this was serious because we didn't know what was wrong with Sarah. And that's where the scary part is, is no idea and I was trying to look up stuff while we were there while we were waiting for people to come like is this appendicitis is like how does that work you know where's the pain Mm -hmm. at what's going on you know is there an alien inside of her that's gonna pop out you know we don't know it felt like there was an alien inside of me wanting to pop out kind of well turns out there was kind of an alien inside of me yeah yeah and so so we went in and you know and this is all really scary when you're at the emergency room well because especially if they have no idea what it is and like they're asking your pain level and I was like 
a pain level like they give you the pain level like one yeah. through ten what's your pain level at and I could barely so I'm just like I don't know eight like yeah. I, I don't know and I couldn't stop crying and it was just it was awful it was man it was yeah really awful to see I mean it, uh, I felt horrible and too can I just, just tell you that Greg is like the best friend ever he is the greatest human he did not leave me Except for when I asked him to, like when they were having to do like a bunch of tests and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you so much, Greg. Oh, yeah. Well, like, I mean, you, that's uh, what... I don't even know if I would have been able to make it out of my house because I was about ready to pass out like on my floor. I don't know what would have happened. So yeah, turns well, out that it's... it was a bigger deal than we thought. It was. Mm-hmm. So sat in there, um, you know, for hours and Sarah would just go in and out of the room for tests. And that by that point, her dad showed up at, at, at mid morning because he had driven down from Bremerton. Uh, once I talked to him, he's like, nope, I'm on the road, which is great because he is actually a doctor, so I will, won't go into it too much, but it, man, it helps when you have somebody who's an actual doctor in the room to mm-hmm. talk to the other doctors. Um, but yeah, just yeah, kind of sat there with her while Sarah would go, they'd wheel her out to, for a test and then wheel her back in and then wheel her out, all the while getting her pain meds because they had you on a drip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had me on a different drip, so they put in the IV thing, which this is how much pain I was in because they put in the... Uh, what is it called? Not the I. Is it the IV or isn't that an IV or a drip yeah whatever or it is? What do you call where that? they put the they put the needle in you and basically like they can uh, put like medication and like you know fluids and things. I don't know what you call that then. No, maybe the it's IV not. Drip maybe it's the... not a drip because it's not like you had a bag. It was just like there and they would come and. Yeah, I can't remember what it is, but they put that in, and so basically they can feed you the medicine or like fluids or anything through that, and so yeah. that's how much I pain I was in because they just shoved it in. I'm like, I don't care, just stick it in my arm. Yeah. I need to. So we do all kinds of tests, like because um, initially they first thought it was me. Uh, that I had a kidney stone. And so they were talking about how, like, they had thought fr- from the symptoms that it sounded like there was a kidney stone that maybe was stuck in there that had calcified and that was trying to pass. Which I didn't know what a kidney stone was when we went in there. I mean, I've heard that term before, but, yeah, it's we're not going to get too too in-depth with the medical side of it, I guess. Maybe we shouldn't do that, but it, it's, not a, it's not a huge No, deal. but I'm going to say what it was. It's painful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a kidney stone's apparently painful, but... You, you don't have to do anything invasive, generally speaking. They do, like, blast sound waves at it, which breaks it up, apparently. That's, mm-hmm. what, they, that's what she was saying. Which is very, like, non-invasive. So, like, basically, yeah. just the sound waves, and then they just kind of wait for you to pass through, like, pass it. So, I'm like, yeah. okay, awesome. Well, that's painful, just something. but not a huge Painful, deal. but it's totally going to, like, yeah. go away. Which, by the way, I guess you get it from dehydration, so make sure you drink plenty of water. Because there's a bunch of people in Portland that I guess fed kidney stones because we had such hot weather, mm-hmm. and people aren't hydrating enough. So, I learned my lesson just from not that not even happening to you just learning about it like oh i don't want that water is very important water's good Mm -hmm. anyway so um, so i ended up getting a ct scan yeah and they checked for it and so like this whole time i was convinced that it was a kidney stone so i'm like okay well well it's not that big of a deal oh i do want to say because somebody just asked how many crazies were in the oh there were crazies there were crazies so a side note we're gonna get to what happened to sarah (laughs) again she's obviously has survived so uh so it's good but it's it was still very scary morning but at that point when we got in there it was so early in the morning there was hardly anybody else in in the er and no which was like actually good timing because yeah. i guess it gets busy throughout the day so i mean we did get there like right before like so it wasn't before, too before crazy the morning busy. rush yeah and like so right. <laughs> the morning rush happened after after we were there and I was noticing outside of, of the room that Sarah was in, like more and more police officers were kind of showing there up. There were a lot of police officers. And, you know, you're so concerned with what's going on with the person you're there with that you kind of don't pay attention as much. But eventually there became so many police officers, you couldn't ignore it. And they were all gathering in the hallway. And there was, I don't know, like seriously, like 10 of them mm-hmm. probably. No, at least. yeah, 10 police officers out there. It's like, okay, so who are they here for? What is going on here? And, and before then... you think it, it wasn't for me. <laughs> no, it was yeah. not for Sarah. No. And then you start hearing uh, the guy out back yelling and screaming. And uh, motherfucker, and, motherfucker, 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 and like hitting something. I'm like, what? Stuff's getting is knocked happening? over. It's like, ah, oh, that's that's who they're here for. Yeah. And uh, you see that guy kind of run by the room. And then <laughs> later on, there's another shirtless guy there's a shirtless dude running, just around, running around, doing like the tough guy walk. Like, dude, you are not tough walking around <laughs> with your shirt off in the ER. Like, no. nobody thinks you're a badass. No. But he was trying to do the strut down the hall. Like, the fuck, man? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, like, that was dude, weird. Yeah, yeah, it's that's not the place. That's not the place you look cool, dude. No. It just doesn't work for you. Nobody it. looks cool. Nobody looks cool and walking then, around And then the that's ER. why we realized there were so many cups there. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And that's, that's <laughs> when we found out that. So anyway, yes, so the crazies all, did show up. Yeah, so the crazies were there. So that's all happening. So I uh, ended up getting a CT scan to see if it's a kidney stone. Um, come back. Uh, get the scans back. So it turns out 
so this whole time I was convinced that that was what it was. I'm like, cool, like, you know, because hospitals are scary anyway, and I've never mm-hmm. been there. I've never, you know, had any procedure except for minus my wisdom teeth when I was oh, yeah. like 16, when I had my wisdom teeth out. Do they out. put you under for that? Or? They do, but I remember I even woke up during it. Like they had to put more, um, they had to give me more whatever it was that knocked you out because I woke up to Anesthesia. them scraping. Yeah. Uh, so that was the only time I'd ever had anything uh, close to a procedure. Yeah. So um, they came back. So the doctor came in and he's just like, so uh, your CT scan came back normal. And it turns out that it, well, there was a whole other thing that happened with this, but we don't need to get into that. Yeah. There was a nurse. Or whatever. Yeah, you, oh, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a crappy nurse. Yeah, there was a crappy nurse who thought the doctor had already spoken to me and uh, and told me what was going on, but he hadn't. And she was very abrasive and had a really shitty bedside manner. Let me tell you. 98% of the other nurses were the most amazing people in the world. Of course, it's the one that... The one was pretty bad. She was pretty bad. She gave away the diagnosis from the CT scan and just she gave blurted us, She it. gave the spoiler without even like prepping me for what was yeah, happening. Yeah, something that the doctor was supposed to do. And she just blurted it out. And it's a scary term. It's a scary word that she just blurted out mm-hmm. that uh, none of us had, had heard anybody talk about yet. No, so up until that point, I thought it was still a kidney stone. And then yeah. this nurse walks in and she's like, all right, well, since you have a, a, a large cyst, we're going to have to go. I'm like, What? What yeah. do you mean? I thought it was a, a kidney stone. That's how that's how we found out. And she out. was so unfriendly. And this was after seven hours of being there. Of me just sitting there being poked and prodded and looked at by so many people. And then this woman just comes in. Just well, since you have a sex. She's like, she was a bitch. I'm just yeah, going to say that. She was. And Greg and I was both. And I was like, I immediately burst into tears. I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, oh, you didn't know? Nobody told you? I'm like, No. I thought I had a, a kidney stone. I don't know what you're talking about. No. She's like, oh, yeah, well, we need to do this, and then you need to... I'm like, I was just like, in nobody shock. nobody had said what the results were from this test. I mean, no. that's a very sensitive thing. You need somebody just to explain it. So you're like, okay, well, here's what happened. Because it's scary. It's terrifying it when someone's like, hey, guess what? You have a huge growth inside of you that you didn't know. And by huge, I mean huge. So, well, And your mind goes to the worst places because you don't know. I mean... Obviously, it we are not cancer. doctors. You know, Sarah, of yeah. course, is half doctor of since course. her father's a doctor, but mm-hmm. uh, not in this side of, of things, not uh, internal medicine. So anyway, no, you, you have no idea what it is. And yeah, you your mind goes to the worst places. Mm-hmm. And it's like, holy shit, this is really, really scary. And uh, yeah, so this, I think that's one that, of oh, them. That might have been one of the Russians. I think so. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a homemade. Uh, yeah. I might, might have been thing. one of my neighbors out there. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll see if anybody pops up in the background. There was one out there earlier today. Yeah. I saw him and he was like, hello to you. I'm like, oh, Oh, boy. he said hello? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He was pushing a bicycle. I'm like, all I could think of was, is that stolen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm realizing that we're talking right now with the window open. They can probably hear. Oh, they're fine. Yeah. They don't, they don't uh, care. I did just kind of realize that. they. Where, now I'm very close to their territory. Okay. Now I need to be I careful. Do not fear the neighbors. You're okay. You don't. You don't. Well, <laughs> you true. are kind of living here now. Well, I am. I'm <laughs> living in your basement. <laughs> so I am a new true. roommate, by the way. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, all right. Well, yeah. So, so, so anyway, anyway, found out this horrible thing. Found Back out this that. horrible thing from this horrible nurse. Um, again, like the other nurses, were, they made the time so much easier because it turned out that I did have to stay there because I did, in fact have a, a cyst in my abdomen um that was and i'm gonna just gonna say this once the size of it because it is ridiculous four and a half inches in diameter it was an 11 and a half centimeter di- in diameter cyst which is basically the size of a grapefruit which was inside of my body which is why everything like i've always just had kind of like i don't know like like stomach issues and things and they think that's why because you know there's this grapefruit inside of me that was you know moving things around that shouldn't God. be so uh, needless yeah. to say, it turned out to be a big deal. And they were like, all right, so we're probably going to have to have surgery on you immediately because they can't take a chance of it puncturing. They think the reason um, that it was uh, that I was in so much pain was because it was moving and because it's moving, it could puncture and that could cause an infection, which is just leads yeah. to all sorts of bad things. It's like, cool, we're going to have to get you in uh, to surgery as quick as possible. So um, within them telling me that I was going to have to have surgery and within them doing it, I think it was like 45 minutes. It was really fast. Cause they, it was supposed to be like four hours because I took off. Yeah, because Greg had left and there's like, oh, we probably won't yeah. get her in until like 430 or so. Yeah, because I ran to get your computer and, and we're like, OK, well, Sarah's going to be here for a while now. She's going to have to be here overnight. And she wanted her computer and her phone charger and all that. So I, I went and got that stuff, figuring I was going to be back in plenty of time before she went in. I got back. 
you were already in. Mm-hmm. You were already in. I was already in. in. Like, they already... And the doctor was so amazing, and she's just like, well, this is what we're going to do. This is... Uh, you're going to be under. You're going to be over under for this particular amount of time. Mm-hmm. Which, if you've never been under anesthesia, like, it's really I've scary never, to think... Yeah. So, I, so the procedure itself uh, to get that out was supposed to be an hour. Mine ended up taking a little over two hours, which I didn't even know until like later on in the night because was, nobody had told me because I guess like they were having a hard time getting out, which is terrifying to know that you're completely out of it and like there are things happening that you don't know and then there are complications that you didn't know. Well, let me just say, yeah, because and you're under when all this is happening, but I was sitting there in the in the waiting room. So they have this waiting room and I had no idea this is how it works. And I'm assuming a lot of people don't just because hopefully you don't have to spend too much time in ER waiting for somebody in surgery. But the way it works now is you sit in this giant waiting room and they've got a board up. It's almost like an airplane, like a rival departure board <laughs> where everybody's really? assigned an anon. Yeah. So you oh, were assigned a this. number. Your name's not on it, but you have a number and um, it's like an, like an eight digit number. So you know who that person is if you know, if you have their number and it shows like in prep, in surgery, in waiting room, and like, just like like there's like all when things. you can order a pizza along and line and see when it's like no. being made and, and cooking and, and then delivery. On top of that, you get one of those round like flashy button things that you get at like restaurants if you're well, like waiting a pager in line. Or yeah, a pager. So it's like you know when when you go to a restaurant, it's like oh well, it's an hour and a half wait. We'll give you a pager. You can go to the bar. You get one of those that's exactly like a restaurant one. And so oh, it's sitting weird. there, and then when you're when you're out, it just goes ding 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 ding, ding. and so the buzzer went off, and that's and that's when we knew to go up and uh, and talk to the people, and then they're like, okay, yeah, go into the room. The doctor's gonna be out here in a minute. And oh explain wow! Everything. Yeah, it's really it was really weird. It felt kind of surreal. It's like, yeah, I'm holding this, but Sarah's in there getting operated on right now, but I'm waiting for this buzzer to go off. Yeah, and uh, it was, I mean. It was nerve wracking to me because it just kept going. It, I did think it was supposed to be shorter. Yeah, it was it just supposed kept to going be an longer hour and, and longer. Then, yeah. And then you're like, you know, again, my mind going to the worst place. Well, because is like, it doesn't oh my seem God, like what's happening a in surgery there? goes longer because it's going well. No, <laughs> that no. doesn't seem like those two. It really does. Things go hand in hand. Um, but yeah, the the trippiest thing about being under anesthesia. So, uh, so I was in there, went in at about um, two, I think finally came to around like 4 30 yeah i think that's when i started to uh wake up a little bit and i woke so what's weird is you go into the surgery room like it's completely you know surgical white like everything you know they're just like the big which i've never seen. it looked like something out of a movie like with the big silver domes of light you know like those big oh, lights really? that they have do you remember going into the surgery mm-hmm. room that's where they put you under yeah because they wheeled you in because you could have like if, where they were gonna cut you open that's yeah. the spot so what they have is they have uh if you're afraid of anesthesia they have a pre-anesthesia anesthetic that you can take that they could basically do in the prep room so you wouldn't remember them pushing you to the surgery room i would probably want that or you could just do the anesthesia I'll be honest, so i was talking I, to, i'd be afraid of it well i was talking to my dad and he's just like well you know the anesthesia is gonna work and he's like by the time it's just gonna make you so groggy he's like just go in and do it so i remember them pushing me from the prep room where you have to sign you know your life away all the consent forms and everything uh. then the doctor pushed me from there to also there's not a lazier feeling in the world than someone pushing you around in a hospital bed it's kind of awesome <laughs> because you're just kind of flying through the corridors huh. i've never had anyone push me it's probably in super a bed smooth before. it is and they had trans- Good shocks. They had transport people at uh-huh. this hospital that weren't the the nurses, but they would uh, be like, "All right, we need transportation for Sarah," and they'd come down to whatever floor I'm on, and they just come pick me up and then wheel me to the next floor. It was huh. weird. Weird. Uh, so yeah, so the doctor moved me from prep to the surgery room, and like they roll you in, you know, and they have you like uh, they put you from the from the moving bed that you're on to the surgical table, kind of put the blanket they like put blankets on you you know they make sure everything's gonna give you a bunch of oxygen at first the doctor will sit and talk to you and you're surrounded by all those like big circle lamps they're all over like above you okay like some sort of movie and then that's and then once they're ready they take off the oxygen mask and then they did the thing where they like tap me because they're like all right we're gonna tap you when we're gonna start giving you the anesthetic why why do they tap you just to let you know to start because they have you do deep breaths with the oxygen and then and then basically they're like all right so now we're gonna change and they have to do something where like they oh, push on your trachea so that they can put the breathing tube in. It was a real process. Anyway, so all I remember is talking to the doctor and then she's like, all right, here's the anesthetic. And I just remember her going, night, night. <laughs> and then that was it. <laughs> then boom, two and a half late hours later, wake up in a completely different room. There are a whole bunch because the surgery room was So do all, you feel like you slept or no, you just you just closed your eyes and woke, it, opened your eyes? Let me just tell you, it was the weirdest thing. So I just feel like I just blinked. 
and then I opened my eyes. Oh man, because that's the weird. surgery room had no windows in it. You know, it's all walled off and just you know pristine, completely surgical, like surgically uh-huh. clean, like all steel and and white basically. And I woke up and there I was in this room with a big bay of windows next to me, and all this like natural light was coming in. And I remember I heard this beeping, and I just remember I woke up. And I'm like looking around, and the first thing you do is I looked at my. Oops. I'm like, oh god, I have my hospital gown on, and of course, what you want to do is like lift it up. So I'm like, did it happen? Did it already happen? I don't know if it already happened. And so I did the thing where like I lifted up my surgical gown, and then you see like the bandage. I'm like, oh god, okay, it happened. I'm I'm looking at the live chat too because we've got the funemploymentradio.com/slash live for thank you for our live subscribers. We really do appreciate that. Some people are saying Edward's saying it's it's like blinking. It is. It was Ontario so weird. Dude says waking up is the freaky part. That's it, weird. See, so you don't even feel like you dreamt or no, you slept no, at all. Just, I just woke you close up your eyes and I just and, woke up and I'm like like this and I look over and there there's bright lights and I'm like where am I and then I then I look around and I see all the other hospital beds because it's basically everyone coming out of their anesthesia and uh, and then I'm kind of looking around and then I look down at my hand you know and I have the IV and the finger thing and my arm cuff oh man and then weird like, but then your gown is covering everything so you can't see what happened to you so that was the freakiest part is like lifting it up and being like oh god okay it happened Wow. So then you have to kind of prove that your wits are without uh, about you. And uh, like, they they give you a test. Yeah, you have to kind of talk. You have to make sure like you can say your doctor's name, and they just did a bunch of um, just make sure that you're making sense, and then they can wheel you out of there. Because I could only leave after I started making sense. So like, all right, well, your friend and and your dad are in the other room, but we have to make sure that you know you're kind of getting off the um, anesthesia before we you know let you out. Because I don't know, you have to make sure that it's worn off a little bit. So. Yeah, that was freaky. Closing your eyes, opening them, and poof, weird. You're on a That's not how I would place. picture. Like I would, I yeah. would think that you dream or it'd be like you were sleeping. But I guess, again, I've I've never been under it. Mm-hmm. That's that's weird. It's weird, huh? And then it's also weird because I mean, they removed something the size of a grapefruit out of my body, and yeah. I do like feel a little lighter. Like it's weird that you don't know something's wrong with you until you do. And afterward, I'm like, I do feel better. There was something wrong. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was shoving I mean, I still all feel of like your shit. other internal organs around. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Well, I mean, I was sliced open a bit. So, I mean, I'm still yeah. not feeling awesome. And, um, yeah, which is why Sarah's been staying over at my place. Like her little apartment by herself. It's that's so just not hot. a good idea. And, no. And this is really nice. And Greg has a big house and he has like a really nice, like furnished, um, like basement area downstairs with the TV and everything. So I've been, thank you so much. Greg mm-hmm. is the, I can't even express how grateful I am. No, oh, I'm going to cry. Can't be on your no, own I in know. your weird, creepy apartment. With, I know. You know. Wall man watching on you. With wall man you. watching me. Maybe he'll bring me snacks. Better, so. better to be in my creepy basement. But so. the thing is like, so I did end up staying the night at the hospital, mm-hmm. um, which was interesting. I've never stayed at a hospital. Uh, so much weird public access. I ended up watching that um, public access channels. Yeah. Did you know that there are multiple ones? I mean, I like the public access channels, but I don't watch that many. All right. I, I, I don't know. So yeah. there was one. I took a picture of it. I'm going to post well, this later. And we should later. say that the one you went to, and we we kind of just went to the closest one. I mean, it was a it's a, a religious hospital, right? Yes. A, a really religious affiliation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of crosses and, yeah. and things everywhere. Which, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. So there were a lot of weird religious channels, but there were also a lot of uh, public access channels. One of which just had, um, I think it's from Futurama. I can't remember what it's from. Do you remember the Hypnotoad? It's like a weird. It's a hypnotoad. I think it's from a Futurama. Hypnotoad. I honestly have no idea. Where it's basically no like, what like that a fr- uh, like a toad, but basically it has pupils that kind of like get smaller and larger, and it's called the hypnotoad, and it's something. Anyway, why this, is it called the hypnotoad? I think because he's like a hypnotizing toad, and his eyes look like he's trying to hypnotize you. But this was a channel of just that. It was a channel. I ended up watching it for ten minutes just to see if it would change. Nope, it was just a channel of the hypnotoad just playing over and over again. Another one. I got a picture of it. I can't remember the name. I sent it to you. Um, where it's this woman. Oh yeah, you did. I uh, don't have my phone with me. Uh, let me look here. It was the most ridiculous thing well, this ever. Is probably we know somebody who knows this woman. I don't. Yeah, because I. But. Yeah, so I was watching this. I'm like, I have to take a picture of this yeah. to make sure I'm not hallucinating. Well, here's the thing. Sarah started sending me texts like, and this was uh, Thursday night, I guess, when she was staying there. I'm like, all right. Well, and she's she was still pretty loopy. I mean, not, <laughs> you know, I don't know if she realized she was loopy, but she was, she was a little loopy and that's fine. And she just what? started sending me screen caps of things she was watching on television. I don't remember the hypno toad, but, uh, um, oh, I have that I'm one on like, my phone. Too. Okay. I can prove it. All right. Thanks. And yeah, you sent me one of some show on public access called diary of a middle-aged fat ass in Portland, Oregon. That is the name of the show. That is the full name of the show. 
So, if you can see I'm, that. Yeah. No, we'll post a picture along with this. Yeah, well, there I mean, it is. this is somebody who obviously lives in Portland, so. It was just bizarre. So I was watching this. I'm like, wait, is this real? And so I took a picture, thank God, because I'm yeah. like, I cannot just be dreaming about this. And it was just basically just a woman, just a normal looking woman, talking about the smoothies that she's drinking. And then that was it. Uh-huh. It was the weirdest thing. So, yeah, all the different public access channels yeah. and, and religious channels. So you were watching all of that but stuff. But anyway, yeah, I thought then- that I was like going a little nutty because I am on medication since I did have a, a very invasive surgery. It's going to take a while too. But that being said, since I did have surgery, they do send you back, uh, you know, they send you home with medication, like pain medication to make sure that you don't hurt. Yeah. And Which, uh, this is where it's <laughs> this is where it's coming in. So my parents are now calling me probably like every hour or two. Greg has heard this because like he's always calling me. My parents are both terrified that I'm going to start being addicted to uh uh, to pain prescribed med- it's like medication. They've, they've watched some after school special about the girl who was oh. in an accident and then started taking pain kills and then just Here, like I'm two days later her life is just out of control slamming bottles of pain pills and it's well, that's I've just, been here. I mean, it's there's, you know, she takes taking the prescribed amount. My prescribed know. amount that has been given to me. And so my parents are basically trying to convince me to not take my pain medication because they're afraid that I'm going to get addicted. Okay, I should you not. This is a text message I got from my mom this morning. And I finally had to call her and be like, Mom, you've got to leave me alone. I just had, you know, I was cut open. I need to have, she's like, well, some Tylenol will do it. Tylenol will be fine. I'm like, Mom, Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> All right, my mom wrote and said, Hi, sweetie, how are you doing this morning? There was an article in today's paper about doctors over-prescribing opioids. <laughs> it freaks me out. How about using ibuprofen or Tylenol? How is your pain level? <laughs> Love you, sweetie. I'm such a worrier. Be sure to take it slow this week. XOXO. <laughs> so now... So so both you know, her and my dad are alternating, calling me and just being like, so how many pain pills are you taking? Since this is the start of our own after school special or like a Hallmark, uh, where, what would this be on? Lifetime? Lifetime. Mm. Where you start getting addicted to it. You're living in my basement. All of a sudden mm. things are going to go missing from my basement because you have to get more of your pain pills that you're, that you're oh, going to Oh yeah, after. I'm a pain and pills. I'm not making, you know, pain pill addiction is a serious thing. Sarah doesn't have I'm it. I'm not That's going to be addicted to pain pills. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing you down there just chugging them. Oh God. <sighs> Well, now my parents, because it's the whole Catholic guilt thing, man, Uh because I haven't done anything wrong. And now my parents are making me feel as if I'm doing something wrong by taking the medication that's prescribed to me. Okay. Courtney in the lifetime chat is saying. In the lifetime uh, lifetime chat. chat, Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Courtney in the live chat is saying we need a lifetime movie title for Sarah's uh, drug addiction, impending drug addiction. So, yeah. Something about opioids. uh, um, Um, Yeah. What would it start off with? uh, I can't remember. So, I mean addicted to pain um you can work on it yeah i really yeah, you can, can work I on can. it we'll workshop it mm-hmm, i need to workshop it a little bit so but yeah so this has been never ending like my my whole recovery has been like watching bad movies taking my pain pills because i'm addicted and um fielding phone calls from my parents asking me if i am addicted to my pain pills. yeah and i will say you know obviously i want sarah to be comfortable you know she's recovering and it is a serious thing she had surgery but God damn, there's been a lot of uh, Felicity on in this house. <laughs> and Felicity is the worst TV show that has ever been created. And I'm, I've never seen it before until over the last three days where it's on mm. 24 hours a day at this house. It's terrible. It's awful. Mm-hmm. Felicity is awful. Oh, it has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. None. And None. I've I've been around you when you watch like Gilmore Girls. I can watch Gilmore. makes Gilmore Girls look amazing. Gilmore Girls is amazing. Compared to this. Felicity is Terrible. Mm-hmm. That is my only statement. That's the one thing I've learned over the last couple of days. That's, uh, that's Rick says, up. I am living in a basement in Southeast. That's sad. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. No, that's all right. Next step, I might as well chug down some more pain pills. <laughs> I know, right? You're going to be hanging out with the neighbors. I mean, I've been, my life's thing. already sad living in the basement. <laughs> Down in the basement. <laughs> no, I do have to say that In the it basement is, with Ollie. <laughs> I know. Ollie the dog. I get to hang out with Ollie the dog. <laughs> Me and the dog hanging out in the basement. <laughs> yeah, the basement is a little scary, but I think I've been like... You know, too out of it to actually be scared because regular Sarah, like, you know, normal, not in pain, um, you know, Sarah would be scared of sleeping in the basement because, you know, clearly because it's being Mm -hmm. haunted and there's the gimp room and all that weird stuff down there. Yeah, but like right now, I'm room. just I'm so grateful and to, to have a cool that, place to to like lay down and watch TV. The gimp room is the secret room in my basement. We call it the gimp room. There's no gimps in there, um, but yeah, there is a secret room in my basement. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what it's called. No, and that's like right next to where the futon is that I'm sleeping on, which oh my gosh, it's so comfortable. It's like the good. best thing. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. 
But so that's uh, that's kind of the saga of what has gone on over the last uh, couple of days and why, you know, obviously we took Thursday and Friday off. Mm. We're doing this one here from my house. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. We may do another one here from the house too. It, it's all going to depend on Sarah's recovery time. Yeah, I'm trying. Feeling. I'm feeling better, but every time I move around a little bit, it's, yeah, it's but still a little you hard. You can't push it too much because, yeah. I mean, you did you did get cut open. I won't go I mean, into details about like how many, I've, I have three incisions yeah. though. They had, did it in three different places. So it's three different places that are healing and, it's, yeah. and they're all in different, like different, Sides and air. It's just, it uh, kind of hurts. Question too. Uh, in the live chat uh, from Mr. Jenke asking who's familiar with the layout of my house because every section of the house has a name. Um, staying in the gimp room or no man's land? So, no man's land, she doesn't have to stay there. I'm not no staying man's in land. The spider, isn't that the spider area? No, that's uh, Spider City. Spider City, you're not in Spider City. That's oh, a whole different thank section. You, Greg. There's the Spider City is the gateway to the gimp room. So there's Spider City is a whole little section of its own, and it's uh, really creepy and full of spiders. No Man's Land is the dirt side. It's all walled off. I have access panels to it, but I would not make you stay in No Man's Land. Nobody stays in No Man's Land. Whatever goes well, on I back there stay in no is Man's they, Land. they do whatever they want back there. I don't know who lives there. I don't know what's down there. I don't know what goes on on that side. I don't open the panel. They don't open it back. It stays that way. Hmm. Um, no, you're staying in actual the, the main part of the basement, um, which I haven't named... I haven't actually named the but section nice. you're in, it's like the furnished a little, section. Yeah, it's like a little apartment because you used to have roommates staying there, right? Yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I kind of. I mean, it really is just up, like, like a up. tiny, cool, and especially since it's been hot, like the mm. basement's perfect. Like it's got my, television. Oh futon, my gosh! When I had to go back to get stuff. my stuff out of my apartment, it was like a thousand degrees. I'm like, I cannot. I, I would not be able to do this. No, no, that would be miserable. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So there's that's that's what's going oh, on. Oh, what's all over my hand? I don't know what, what is all is over that? your hand. Why do you have yellow stuff? Is that uh, is that from the pain pills? Is it like I don't you're know? You're getting jaundice. Do you Am have I jaundice? Getting... What? That looks like ink. It looks like you have ink on your hand. How do? I, where would yellow ink come from? I, I don't know weird. what you're doing. Okay. I don't know, I don't what, know, you're doing know what I'm either. doing either. Oh, you okay. want to do some world of crazy? Let's do. Yeah, let's do some. Let's I mean, I'm idea. already playing the music. Let's, let's so do it. Like, let's okay. do some world of crazy. <laughs> I feel like this is all world of crazy. Yeah, it kind of is. I also took my pills about 45 minutes ago, and I kind of feel like they're kicking in. And sorry if you're watching live and you keep seeing me look down. At, I'm trying to look at my phone because I can't use He can't. His computer. computer's over here. And uh, yeah. I'll try to see if I can get in there. All right. Hello, my friends. My name is Sarah X. Dillon. Welcome to my world of crazy. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Water, water, water. water First water, up, water. Greg, a compelling new study has come out suggesting... The American people are chicken wing eating maniacs. Oh, I do like chicken you wings. You do like chicken uh, wings. Although I'm more of a chicken strip guy. I don't I'm more really of a like chicken, strip. chicken wings. I'm not as big into the chicken wings. Um, I'm very particular. I do like my chicken. I'm a chicken man. We've talked about it before. But I'm more the the chicken strips are kind of my jam. Okay. I don't like messing around with the bone side of it that much. Greg, I have something to say. What? I have had about 17 bottles of water today, and I really have to pee. And I know that we're filming this, and I, do, I would not want to do this, except for I can't concentrate because I have to pee so bad. Yeah, well, it's going to be tough for the rest of the show for you. I okay. To, well, all right, yes, start, yes, all take right, a break. Should I play Paul? See how long you can do it. If I Well, had I known, I could have pulled up, actually, Paul the Octopus to play the video while we're broadcasting live. But no, Well, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't know. It kind of came out of nowhere. All right. Well, let's do that. Well, and I have, as you were I saying, can, how you know how important water is. I don't want to is. move the camera too much, but I did want to do, give like a little tour of the backyard. Well, yeah, give a tour of the backyard. I, yeah, but if I move the camera, it's going to screw it up. I'll, I'll step aside for a second and I'll and I'll give a uh, okay. So I just I quick tour. Then. Okay, oh, just go, God. go, go, go. Right, hurry, go hurry. Fast. No, I know. I I'm just kidding. Oh. All right, Sarah is making her way through the uh, through the living room. Oh. Trying to get there. Okay, so uh, if you're listening live, if, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, I apologize because this part may not be as interesting. But I'm gonna see if I can step aside here. And so if you ever hear, you know, since I do name everything here at my house, uh, you know, the backyard, that's all that name. But to this section in the back, this is what I call the compound. So it's this old cement wall, and uh, I honestly don't know. It's it's brick like cement bricks. I don't know how old it is. 100%. There used to be a, a horse hitching post back there, and the house is very old, so I don't know. I, I, my theory is I believe they had horses back in it at one point, and then they also had um, a greenhouse one way back there. Now there's nothing on it, so it's it's my weird, creepy little area. Although, one thing, so we do have a puppy here at the house now, and uh, he's downstairs. Maybe I'll bring him up. He's kind of rambunctious, but he's been digging holes in two separate areas out there, and I am terrified of what he's going to find. Like, he's really obsessed with these two areas. And I don't know what's down there. 
there shouldn't be anything there, but the likelihood that something is buried is quite possible. You know, there's 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 quite a high probability that there are you know um, people buried back there, and so people. that's I don't know. It's the house is from 1907. The property, the house is from 1907. Who knows if people were living here on this property before that? Because oh, there's true. been cow bones that were found out here, so this was like a pasture, I think, at some point. Mm-hmm. Who knows what's buried in my backyard? I don't know, but I don't like the idea that the puppy's obsessed with these two. I like your two house, areas. though. It's like a big mystery. Just it is. To I'm be just uncovered. saying, you know, there's, there's bodies waiting to be There's uncovered. bodies. Yeah, there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's, you know, there's probably bodies. <sighs> All right. Well, thank you for letting me take a break. I feel yep. a lot better. All right. All good. right. So chicken. Back to chicken. Yes. A new study has revealed that Americans eat an average of nearly 18,000 chicken wings in their lifetime. Wow. 18, the average American. I don't think I've eaten that many. Like, I again, I'm not, chicken strips. Yeah, you factor in chicken strips or nuggets. Well, it says mm. chicken wings because I don't eat things. That's like, chilled. I'm a meat eater, but I can't eat off the bone. We've uh-huh. talked about this before. So, um, So since their creation... In 1964, you know, that's when chicken wings were created. At Anchor Bar in Buffalo, New York, uh, the chicken wing has been a classic American staple. And, uh, yeah, and Americans aren't holding back when it comes to their love of their chicken wings. Yes. They're, they're delicious. The average carnivore devours 24 of chicken of the chicken wings per month. About that's, 290 a year. That seems like an excessive... Somebody eats 24 wings a month? Like, I, I definitely don't eat that many. Oh, there's some more sirens too. Just for yeah, there else. we go. All uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's normal. So yeah, so when projected over the adult average adult lifetime, that amasses to a whopping seventeen thousand six hundred and fifty-three wings consumed per person overall. Yikes. So it doesn't matter if they're from restaurant or whether they're homemade. The results of the poll show that the average pe- person eats seven pieces of wings each sitting when they sit down. So when you eat them, do you think that you eat like seven at least? Um, that also seems like a lot. No, I don't. I don't know if I would eat that many. I mean, I'll I'll eat the boneless ones. Yeah, I'm not sure. I definitely mm. don't eat seven chicken strips in a city like that. I don't. Well, they did uh, poll two thousand Americans, and that's how they came up with this number. So out of two thousand Americans, like, where like, that were they was the average. All these people, like, I, I Buffalo don't know. or like St. Louis or something like maybe maybe something like that. I just don't see that many people eating that many wings here uh, it doesn't say where it was it just says americans and it said that it was uh conducted by a poll company called one poll yeah i don't know if i believe that yeah 24 wings a month is the average mm-hmm. i just no yeah i don't know that's uh that seems like a lot of wings yeah i mean if they're just like taking a poll at an nfl mm-hmm. game or something then yeah sure but- also from their poll they learned um Let's see that 57% of people say that they wouldn't order chicken wings on a first date. Because no, they're this too, too messy. messy. Yeah, no, you can't order messy food. You know what you also can't eat on a date, which I've tried to before? Salads. Oh, yeah. I can't eat a salad without getting it all over my face. Wow. How about you? What do you have problems no, with? No, I eat them dry, so I don't have to worry about the sauce when it comes to the salad. I don't like, I don't like dressing on my salads. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, what That's would why you... I wouldn't get it because I wouldn't want somebody to well, see that. Well, what would you not eat on a date? But Lots of things. I, I don't like eating around other people in general. Oh, my God. I mean, I would probably try to eat beforehand. Well, I know I, you can't do that, but... Um, no, and then just make the like the other person eat by themselves. No, I'm not going to make somebody eat by themselves. But, man, I hate eating around other people. It's just my little thing. Mm-hmm. It's my weird thing. Yeah, I, I, I know like you very well, and, and I eat by barely myself. see you eat. Unless everybody's eating, you know, it's a big group of people at a dinner... I'll do it. I can handle it. I definitely can't be the only person eating in front of someone in one-on-one. You could start your That's own weird. like eating channel because you do have a very strange way of eating. I think what, you like could a, have like an ASMR channel or something. Yeah, I or? think that you could have some sort of like fetish eating channel because you do eat in a shameful Why do you way. Think I, what because do you the mean? way you eat, you're just so ashamed of it. Like you eat in a very strange way. I can't really put my finger on it. Like you eat. I I don't know. I don't know. It's it's strange. What I mean, I don't, I've never seen anyone quite eat like you. Do I eat too fast? You eat or? too fast, and but like I, no, no, that can't be it because I eat slow. Like it takes me a long time to get through. A no, meal. no, no. You it takes you a long time to get through a meal, but when you put it for like the process of getting it from your plate into your mouth. Oh yes, yeah, you quick, do that like, really fast. Just go, like, and then like, blah, 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 then like chew as fast as you can, and then wait like ten minutes and take another bite. I kind of yeah. eat like a reptile almost. A little bit, like, real slow. Mm-hmm. Just taking my time. Okay. Now that I think of yeah, okay. All right, where's Sioux City? Iowa. All right, out of Sioux City, Iowa. We have some fine listeners in Sioux City. Sioux City, all right. Well, a 33-year-old Sioux City man has been arrested after trying to deposit 
a one million dollar bill at a local bank. A one million dollar bill. Yes, a one million dollar wow. bill. Yes. Uh, so according to who media reports, uh, this gentleman named Dennis Strickland. Oh, it doesn't say who was on it. Uh, well, Dennis Strickland. That, tried I feel to, like that's an important factor in there. That would be Greg. That's you know, a really good question. Who would you put on it? Who would you who put you, a, on a million dollar bill? Oh. Hmm. I don't know. Stephen Hawking? Stephen Hawking. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess that's... Madonna? A, <laughs> Madonna. That's who should be on the million dollar mm-hmm. bill. I mean, Weird Al. I think that's deserving. Mm-hmm. Tim Curry? Not Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Weird Al? Okay, if we're talking about currency, who deserves to be on a currency? Tim Currency. Tim Curry <laughs> does not deserve <laughs> to be on a currency. Yes, I heard it. Okay. No, Tim Curry would not be worthy of a currency. Mm. Okay, well, Weird Al's awesome, but he's not worthy of a currency well, either. Well, fine. Okay. Fine. More worthy than Tim Curry. Hmm. <gasps> President Camacho. Camacho. That's yeah. exactly what should be on the million dollar bill. That would be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Alfred E. Newman. Yes. Get it in Bakersfield. <laughs> I will, yeah. Alfred E. Newman. Okay. Do you know who Alfred E. Newman is? No. Okay. I, I didn't think so. Uh, so it's from Mad Magazine. Okay. I used to read Mad Magazine. Yeah, I wasn't even going to pretend. I can't. Yeah. I, I loved Mad Magazine um, growing up. And uh, Alfred E. Newman's the guy that's always on the cover, and they change him to like fit, the like redhead whatever. kid. Yeah, the redhead kid. That's Alfred E. Newman. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's With the his freckles. Name. Yep. All right. Alfred E. Newman. All right. Well, this gentleman, God, 33-year-old man. Dennis Strickland, tried to uh, deposit the fraudulent courtesy. This happened last week. Uh, spotting the fake bill. I'm surprised that they were able to spot it. You know. Sure, people get away with million dollar Wait bills all the time. A minute. Well, the bank teller did notify the Sioux City Police Department, and a sergeant confirmed that indeed Dennis Strickland did try to deposit a piece of paper at the bank, but would not verify any other details about that million dollar bill. Uh, and no charges were filed in relation to it. So I'm just guessing it was probably pretty terrible. And they're like, you weren't even going to get away with this to begin with. Was it just like a piece of paper he scrawled it on? Like one, one million, million dollars. Backwards like L's. Um, well, see, the thing that Strickland did do wrong, though. So he uh, officers arrived at the bank to question him. He was asked to empty his pockets. And that's when they found him in possession of methamphetamine. Uh, of course. Yeah. So he got away with the million dollar bill thing. However got to take the meth out of his pockets. Mm. Well, he was charged with possession of a controlled substance. His first offense, he's being held on $1,000 bond at the county jail. All right. Uh, thank you to Rick Rutherford, who sent this story to me. Is that a Medford? It's not Medford, Oregon. Medford, uh, Is there Massachusetts, ne- I believe. I think it was in Massachusetts, yeah. All right. A man was arrested after a tense standoff because he was threatening a radio station because they wouldn't play an insane clown posse song that he wanted to hear. <laughs> this is a radio station oh, called that's awesome. Kiss 108. So this began last week just after 1.30 with 911 calls about a man in a red car brandishing weapons outside of a radio station uh, in Medford where he was apparently trying unsuccessfully to request the song My Axe, which I guess is an insane clown posse song, and then uh, ranted about the fact that they weren't playing it to several passers-by who were passing him outside. <laughs> I don't like you reading my story when I'm sorry, reading it. Sorry, it's right there. I'm yeah, just thinking, I know. What, what do you want me to look? All right, so a witness named Doreen said, Doreen, uh, Doreen said that he got out of his car with a machete, Stopped a girl who worked on the second floor of the radio station and said, quote, I want you to play a song for me. So he is a self-professed juggalo. Yeah. Uh, so a heavily armed swarm of responding officers were able to box in the juggalo's red sedan outside of the building. And a standoff began as he drank beer and huffed something from a paper bag. Yeah. Well, that's juggalo sounds about, style. Sounds Was it Fago? Right. Did he have Fago? Or it-, uh, it doesn't say Fago. It said that he was drinking beer. Okay. So I don't know if there's an alcoholic kind of thing. It's got to be a malt liquor of some kind, though. Or you could probably, you know that they aren't drinking Fago without putting some sort of liquor in well, it. Well, yeah. It has some, like, Jaeger in it. You like know, that's Jaeger. A, what and is, they call what it, like, juggalo. Jaeger. <laughs> that, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. That's hard to beat. Mm-hmm. Um, I would think they're more like rum drinkers for some reason. Really? Like, yeah, like they love oh, rum. God. No, I think, all I think, I think Juggalos, I think, like, Jaeger bombs. Jaeger. I mean, Jaeger, that's and pretty like good. And, like, flavored vodka. There's got to be something that's a Jaeger. Yo, man, just drink, drink just a couple Jaegers. Just drinking my Jaeger. Oh, yeah, 
that's too good. That's got to be. I know. Thank yeah, you. I'm pretty, pretty proud good. of that one. Yeah, you should be. I'm pretty proud of that you one. You should be. Yeah, Fago and, and Jägermeister. All right, I, we should yeah. uh, save that website. Fun Employment Radio, brought to you by Yego. <laughs> Yego. All right, so he was uh, drinking beer, huffing something out of a paper bag. At one point, he climbed out of his vehicle. This is when the police tried to get him down to the ground, and he refused and told them, quote, you're just going to have to kill me. That escalated quickly. Wow. Uh, well, cell phone videos show police trying to unsuccessfully subdue him with a taser and a beanbag gun. Um, and then they even tried to play ball with him by trying to get the radio station to actually play the Insane Clown Posse song. <laughs> did the radio um, station refuse, though? Uh, they did not end up playing it. It took the better part of three hours, but police were finally able to convince the suspect to surrender. On principle alone, you can't do it. Mm, I know, right? I mean, yeah, you just can't. Like that, do you remember that um, Play Misty for me? No. It's an old, I think it was a book, or it, I know it was a movie. It was about a, like a guy who was like stalking a radio station. Play Misty for me. Play Misty for me. No, I don't remember that one. All right, yeah. So the, uh, anyway, Medford police say it was a peaceful resolution for everyone involved. Nobody got seriously injured and we're grateful for that. Uh, they have declined to release the Juggalo's name, but he will undergo a psych- psychiatric evaluation. All right. All right. And do have another story out of China. A Chinese restaurant has come under fire for offering discounts to Wait women. A do you have to say it's a Chinese rest? Like, is it? Oh, it says Chinese. A yes, restaurant in China. Well, it, the way it's worded it says a Chinese restaurant. Well, that sounds like offense? they're serving like no Chinese food, but I mean, it's not Chinese food there. It's just food to just be a restaurant, a restaurant in China, an American restaurant. Maybe they serve Chinese food. But that's just food. Okay. It's not Chinese food there. It's just food. Are you done with your little soapbox I'm there? I'm not saying no. I mean, I'm just saying that it, it should say a restaurant in China, not a Chinese restaurant. All right. So that doesn't make any sense. So there could be a restaurant here in America, and you could be like an American restaurant. You could, but it sounds weird, doesn't it? Not really an American restaurant chain. But American, if you put it beforehand, then it sounds like that's the kind of food I think that, that this serve. is a you problem. I think it's, it should be a restaurant oh in China. Oh, my God. Well, a restaurant in China... Thank you. ...has come under fire after they have been offering discounts to women with larger breasts. <laughs> yes, they're giving... The larger the breasts, the bigger the discount you get at this restaurant in China. Wow. Uh, so local people have complained uh, to a council after seeing posters advertising discounts for uh, a restaurant called The Trendy Shrimp. The Trendy I Shrimp. I like the name. I do too. At a mall in Hangzhou. Um, so the company's advertisement shows a lineup of cartoon women in their underwear with the slogan, The whole city is looking for breasts. That's a weird slogan. Uh, it lists discounts for women depending on their cup size with greater offers available for women with bigger busts. Wow. Uh, one uh, complaint said the posters were vulgar advertising and discriminatory no. towards smaller breasted women. What? So the posters first appeared at the beginning of August and have since been removed, so they've only lasted for about a week. Uh, Trendy Shrimp General Manager defended their sales strategy, saying once the promotion started, customer numbers rose by about 20%. Uh, adding that some of the women were very proud of their larger breasts and they had nothing to hide. Well, no, it's not that they have anything to hide, but, uh, yeah. Well, how much discount are we talking about? Uh, it doesn't say how much. I think you can find the image. I think it was just a percentage okay. of the bill. All right. Yeah, so I guess uh, this isn't the first time that China has had um, different kinds of themes in order to discount uh, for a particular look for somebody. I guess in January 2015, another Chinese restaurant... Chinese restaurant. Another the restaurant in China? Uh, rewarded diners and gave them discounts if a diner was deemed good looking. Also, another... Who, uh, de- who makes the decision on this stuff? I don't know. Well, another restaurant gave discounted food to overweight men and thin women. I don't know. All right, so there you have okay. it. Okay. And this, my friends, is my pill-induced world of crazy. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good world of crazy. Thank you. That's I can't really solid. tell. I'm not really firing on all cylinders, but I feel okay. No, I think you're doing a great job. Greg, you're doing good. That's so nice of you to say. You're, you're powering Thanks, Greg. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I think uh, maybe maybe we should wrap it up for today. I okay. Think, uh, good. My that's, stomach's kind of hurting. Good. A yeah, because you right. probably need to rest again. Um, yes. It's being and asked, also your how buddies? many goofballs did Sarah take? I think oh. that's the pain medicine starting to kick in mm. a little bit there. No, I think. 
I don't know. Maybe I have to up my dosage. I don't think it's working very much anymore. Is this yeah. how I get addicted, Greg? It is. That's how it's. That's mm-hmm. how it all works out. We're gonna have to call your mom now. <laughs> Sarah's mom. Sarah's out of control. I I seriously had to call her. I'm like, listen, we're gonna have to have a conversation right now. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just trying to heal. Stop bothering me about a pain addiction, a painkiller addiction I don't have. I'm just gonna hear you like, like breaking please. things downstairs, and you're like smashing everything's windows. fine. Everything's fine. Get out of there. I need more. Trying to hawk my stuff. Weird people are going to be showing up in my basement. Start bringing the Russians yeah, over. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like this so far. So far, Thanks, so good. Greg. But I mean, once you get uh, once you go down this road, the lifetime road, hmm. it's going to be really interesting. Well, we'll see. Oh, I want to see if I can find. Since Greg does have cable, maybe I can find a lifetime movie about uh, like pill addiction. I'm and then maybe that'll sure convince me to can. not to not watch Felicity? throw my life down the drain. To maybe not have Felicity on the television. Yeah, Felicity's just awful. It's so. I know. I only bad. have a few more episodes. It's so bad. It's okay. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Fun <laughs> Employment Radio. So again, we were broadcasting live on YouTube today from my house, but it's also going up as a podcast. And uh, of course, you can always uh, listen to that on iTunes or FunEmploymentRadio.com. Thank you to our live subscribers at FunEmploymentRadio.com. We really, really appreciate uh, that support. It's six ninety nine a month. The first week is free. You can <laughs> listen when you want. We've got a live stream that uh, airs. Uh, back episodes of our show and all the other fine programs on the Fun Employment Radio Network it helps us keep the lights on there, and uh, we do appreciate that. We do, um, and I really just want to give a big thank you to everybody who sent me their well wishes. Yeah, I've seen and heard each and every one of them. It means a lot. It's been, it's been super scary, but big thank you to Greg and uh, thank you to all of you for thinking of me. It's, uh, it really did help. It was, I was terrified, and yeah. knowing that you care really means a lot to me. So thank you. Yep. Absolutely. All of those yep. things. And all of those things. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. And thanks mm-hmm. to the support of our sponsors, you know, Next Adventure and Bike Gallery, uh, two of our fine sponsors here from Fun Employment Radio. I just want to give a shout out to them because mm. we really do appreciate their support through everything. Next, well, I mean, not just with this, but I mean, just supporting our show just and supporting what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, nextadventure.net, bikegallery.com. Check out both of their stores there. You can order from wherever you are and, uh, and do that. And we will be back tomorrow. I. Can't say 100% if we'll be live from this house. or No, actually, we have an in-studio guest tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll I, be I think tomorrow. we'll be at the studio tomorrow. So awesome. uh, back to some normal broadcasting. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow with more Fun Employment Radio. Dot com. Bye, friends. You're listening to the Fun Employment Radio Network.